we become a slave to a paradigm that's an illusion. All of what you see is not real. Though it has real effects upon your life. You are simply maneuvered by a control system that you need to break free of. I'm trying to help you before it comes crumbling down and then your heart starts pumping very fast. Because in your mind you will think that your world came to an end. Men's hearts will fail them for fear for looking after those things that are coming upon the world. That's not from one thing, that's from multiple things. In 2004, the army hit the front pages. Scientists, they already admitted back in 2004 and swept all that under the carpet. They didn't know the dynamics of climate change and thus Princeton University was charged with the task of coming up with something and coming up with something quick. Now when you talk about the warming, people get this question in their heads. They'll say, I don't believe in the warming, yet it's getting warmer every single year. So what they did was they threw out a word and people began to chase and support the word with what's happening in the world. The conditions of global warming are absolutely 100% real. The earth is warming up. Radiation is building. Sickness is running rampant all over the earth. But why? You see, there are forces out there that mankind cannot comprehend. In 2004, everything started. Why did it start in 2004? Because that was the impact of a magnetar. That's why. That was the impact of a magnetar. That's when the top of our atmosphere was ripped off by a wave sent by a magnetar. That's why. A piece of our atmosphere was ripped off and you didn't even know it in 2004. Nobody talked about that, did they? Anybody discuss that? No, they didn't. Oh, they had all the instrumentation in the world monitoring it. They were scared to death. They didn't know what would happen. They didn't know. But I'm telling you, they were deathly afraid because they saw it coming. They can see a lot of things coming. They're not going to tell you. For what good would that do? You would only get in the way. I'm telling you that in 2004, everything changed. How convenient. 2004, global warming, that, that discussion really takes off. And in 2005, they had the climate change conference. How convenient. Ever since 2005, what have you noticed? A change in weather phenomena. A change in earthquake activity. A change with the other objects in space. That's why we send probes all over the place. For proof of something, yes, but to also monitor. We've got satellites and craft orbiting just about everything we can because they serve as an early warning system of what will happen to Earth. See, if something is just indigenous to Earth, maybe mankind can change it. But what we're, what we're having is not indigenous to Earth. It is not just for Earth. The entire solar system is beginning to do a wicked shimmy. And solar activity is a telltale sign of the exotic energy that's coming into the solar system. The sun acts as a shield to the entire solar system. The sun does. Just as your skin acts as a shield to protect your insides and to keep things away from the precious internal portions of your body, right? So does the sun create a barrier to keep highly charged particles at bay. And every so often, it's pierced. The skin, the skin, we could say, that envelops our solar system is weakening and things are coming through. There is nothing mankind can do about it. And it's coming. 
That was December 27th. Earth was impacted by that blast. 2004, December 27th. <clears throat> Why? Because there's a phenomenon in space called pulses, right? Pulses. Pulses happen at intervals. Normally when something blows, like a magnetar or something like that, it sends out multiple shock waves. It's like a, a, I don't know, triple, quadruple explosions, right? Well, they're headed towards Earth from more than one source. There's nothing anybody can do about it. 2004, that magnetar just barely skipped us. In fact, it didn't even touch us, but it ripped off a portion of the atmosphere. I, I tell you this, when it passed, it was millions of miles away. But it still sucked off part of our atmosphere. That's a problem. I believe the distance of that pulse of the magnetar was about the distance from Earth to Mercury. That's the distance you're talking about. Right? And it still popped off a piece of our atmosphere. Still, even with that distance, there were also psychological effects that took place in 2004 that have been evolving since then. Listen, a great war is also on the horizon. Now they're going to utilize the breakdown and the fracturing of this planet and war will ensue. They're going to utilize this heavenly event, this event of a breakdown, they, they're going to use that to their advantage for war. The inhabitants of the earth will surely be few. I would go so far as to say 50% of humanity in the first phase of this war is going to be dead. Everybody with me so far? Just like CERN, right? There is public, there is a public uh, um, side of CERN, and then there's the true side of CERN. I can assure you nobody's trying to collide little bitty particles and to find out what. I can assure you that's not the mission. What are they going to do, cure cancer with it? No. It all leads back to something else. Now there is the public side of science of which people are passionate about, and that's the part they know. But listen to me close. In every single experiment, somebody collects the data. Who collects the data not everybody's aware of? So what they're doing is having people who believe in the experiment, giving them a, 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 a portion of a job. They go out and accomplish that job and spend their lifetime doing it so somebody else can collect the data, and they're doing something else with the results. But the people up top, they only know the experiment. They're saying, yes, we're doing our best in the experiment. It works. And that's how they get back online and say, well, you don't know what you're talking about. CERN has nothing to do with this, that, and the other. That's what the experts will say. CERN has nothing to do with this, that, and the other. Why? Because they're passionate about that compartmentalized task that they have. So they accomplish what they're given to accomplish, but as a whole... They don't know what it's producing. There's a portion of science that's a mystery to those folks. They're not educated in full sciences. Why in the world would anybody ever do that? If you had knowledge of all things, there's no way you could teach others knowledge of all things. They wouldn't have a precept for it. So those who know the exotic sciences and the rest of the sciences are the ones who are collecting the information doing something with it. The particles are already coming through. They're already coming through, right? It's kind of like a fireplace. You light up a fireplace, right? You get near the fire and you start feeling the heat. The fire didn't pass through you. You didn't pass through the fire. But you feel the heat. What is that? Infrared light. All, all you're feeling is light. You know that? That's what you feel. Light. That's all you're feeling. What is that infrared light? It's radiation. Is it going to kill you? Well, if you're overexposed to it, it's going to burn you up. But your flesh reacts to the radiation. It raises your body temperature by exciting molecules in your flesh. Therefore, you feel heat. Heat is movement. Movement is heat. Okay, you got that? Heat is movement. Movement is heat. So when you get near something that's infrared, the molecules internally begin to move around. A lot more than you feel heat, the heat of your body. In the same fashion, this wave is coming through. What it emits, the solar system is responding to, just like your skin responds to infrared light. 
So does the solar system respond to these exotic particles coming in because the source is coming close. The source of these waves is coming close. Now, close does not mean right there where you can see it. I can assure you that but prior to you seeing anything, this world is going to rumble like you never saw before. You're going to hear many things. But it's always good to have your ears open to the Holy Spirit and the truth that is within you. That when it is time to do something, you move. And when it is not time to do something, you stay still. Because it could be life or death to you. And that means I don't have the final word on what you must do. The Lord does. Not one man on earth has a final word for what you must do. The Lord knows what you must do. And because he said he would never leave you nor forsake you, he will instruct you. Okay? So as I go through these things, I can only advise. But you must have your ear open to the Lord. Because if you don't, you're going to follow the advice of man, and by that man's word, you may die. This has been The Confidential Report. For even more stories like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel today. And please show your support by clicking the like button on this video. For even more stories and news you deserve to know the truth about, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching The Confidential Report.